in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you okay thank you for watching be blessed Praise the Lord. I'd like us to lift our voices in one minute and thank God for His faithfulness upon this ministry. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you because you are here. Jesus, we thank you. No man can do these things except God. Can you thank him in one minute for the miracle, for the testimony, the transformation? You are good and your mercy is forever. That he is good and his mercies are forever. Are Just the voices. Sing it from your heart. Jesus, we are grateful. We come with hearts full of gratitude for the mighty things that you do in our midst. We extol you. We worship you. We are not ashamed to declare that without you, we can do nothing. We remember where you brought us from. And we thank you for your faithfulness. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you. And I lead you to worship you. Who is there like you? There's no God beside you. I lead you there to worship me. Who is there like you? There's no God beside you. I lead you there to worship me. Thank 
you, Jesus. We bless you. Let the name of the Lord be exalted in the name of Jesus. Please walk to three people. Give them a big hug. And you'll be back to your seat. Hallelujah. Make sure you celebrate someone. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Thank you. I want us to celebrate a good old friend of mine and the ministry, Pastor Femi John. It's been a long time. Good to see you, sir. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming, sir. Let's get to the word. Lord, we give you praise. And we also want to celebrate as many people who have come to write for you and me. I think we should celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3. Blessed be the name of the Lord. On my way back home, I was just thinking all through the journey. Um, I was recounting on God's faithfulness. Please pay attention inside and outside. And um, I was just thinking through what the Lord had put in my heart to share with us tonight. Your dominion in life is a summation of your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. I've said this again and again and I want us to please pay attention. Every gate can be opened if you have the key, not if you want it open. Gates only open when you have the keys. Desire is not enough to bring you to the place of destiny and breakthrough. And so, as we keep coming week after week, I want you to realize that there is a transformation that is happening. And that transformation is happening by the power of the word of God. The word of God not only gives you knowledge, it translates you to become what he's saying. And it empowers you to demonstrate the reality of what you claim to know. Any truth that you have and you know that cannot be demonstrated is not yet a revelation in your life. Hallelujah. And so I want to challenge us that our passion in this place, we must keep our passions high even as we seek to press. To know him and to understand his ways. I give you a guarantee. The Bible says they are life to them those who find them. Not everybody will find them. They are not life to Christians. To those who find them. And health to their flesh. Ah, Kenny, it's good to see you. Hallelujah. And so I want to share with us a few things that will challenge us. Because it's my desire that the least of us will be as great as David. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowledge is like an atmosphere. It commands possibilities in your life. It's not about trying. It's either it is there or it is not. Hallelujah. Are you blessed already? So make sure that you are learning constructively. The goal is not just to carry out a service. You know that we have no business with religion here. The goal is to empower you. Praise the Lord. Come, promise. Look at this. Please bring your what you are holding. Come. Watch this, everyone. What is he holding? What is he holding? You are holding a book. You are aware you are holding a book. If I try to convince you that you are not holding anything, will you agree? Is it an issue of prayer? You are, it, this is called reality. You are holding on to something that has become a conviction. Please.
please listen to me. This is not something you are trying to believe. This is not something that is subject to debate or the opinions of men. See, the degree to which you're, you become stable in the kingdom, um, your stability is proportionate to the depth of your conviction. Whenever you are not convinced about a reality, it's easy for you to drift. Either when it does not yet produce result, or when there seem to be conflicting opinions. The apostle said, but I know whom I have believed. I wasn't just told about him. I know. He says, and I am persuaded, unshakable, immovable. That revelation has become a conviction for me. And I stand upon it. This is what God is doing with us. Bringing us to a point where we are convicted. That you know that you are holding something. You are holding something. That you can take to the world. And no devil, no culture, no system, no limitation, no gate can stop you. It's not just a prophecy. It's a resultant effect of paying attention. There are some things when you hold on to. You have entered your Sabbath. It's not if. It is when. Is God speaking to us now? Thank you. Acts chapter 3. The Bible talks to us about the activities of the early church. Please pay attention. Jesus had resurrected. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1 how that he was with them for a period of 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. He was helping them to be grounded in truth. Are we together? And after the Holy Ghost had come, in Acts chapter 3, the Bible says, in the hour of prayer, they were going to pray. And then they saw a man. He was begging for arms. He had been there at Gate Beautiful. And the Bible says, this time around, when Peter and John came, Peter looked at him. And he made a very interesting statement in verse 6. Chapter 3 of Acts, verse 6. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none. He says, but what? Such as I have. The question is, at what point did he know he had it? Because there was a time he did not have it. Is that true? At what point? What was the evidence that? What happens to a man to know you've had something? Are you getting what I'm saying now? He said, such as I have. I give. I have something. And I'm not only, it's not just I am aware of it. And it can be dispensed. I have it. I know that I have it. I understand the dynamics of his operation. And I can release it to you. He said, such as I have, I give. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let's see what happened the next verse, please. Watch what happened. He says, when he said that the man was still sitting, he didn't stand up. He was still sitting. And the Bible says, his sitting was not going to sway Peter. For Peter to say, I'm not sure again. Peter said, I know I have it. Whether you don't respond, it doesn't change my persuasion. Such as I have. You don't know the activities that sponsor my conviction. Your refusing to act is too small to shake me. And he held his hands. Because he knew he had something. And he was insisting, I have something. And when I speak to you, there should be an effect. And if there is no effect, I insist. He says, such as I have. Many of us seeing that man seated would have quietly moved away for the shame. That is lack of conviction. You, you think you have something. Now a man stands before you and challenges your conviction. And at once you chicken out. But Peter said, no way. I know I have it. You are just meeting me. You don't know who else I have met. You don't know the, the, the revelations that support my audacity. I know I have something. And the man was just looking. Many people have told me to try standing up. And Peter said, you don't know me. And the Bible says he held his hands. He knew he had something. That revelation persuaded him enough. 
he stood before that challenge and would not be embarrassed because he knew it must work is God speaking to us he says and he took him by the hand and what and lifted him and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength to validate that he had something to give listen Peter would have looked at him and said well John you too you saw I tried we did exactly what Jesus said oh God please don't be embarrassed after all we didn't collect money and he would have gone back that would not change the fact that he had something but it was not released Peter said such as I have I'm not only aware I understand that it is supposed to be dispensed and I refuse to allow what I am seeing to influence my convictions he says but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded not confused persuaded the problem with the church is lack of persuasion the grounds upon which our audacity is standing upon is fragile we don't take time to establish conviction upon kingdom realities we're in a hurry to get rema we're in a hurry to get revelation we're in a hurry to get knowledge let me tell you something the world is ruled by men of conviction dead or alive you don't respect a man because you believe in him you respect a man because of consistency of conviction. When a man becomes unbending, he commands your respect at once. That's why we cannot pretend that Boko Haram is a force to reckon with. They will be defeated, but their convictions are strong. Strong unto death. Are you getting what I'm saying? The only reason, the only reason why faith is an issue in the church is because our convictions are small. Hallelujah. And so when we sit down like this, as the word of God comes, it gives us understanding. It not only tells you what you have, it explains to you the dynamics of it. So that you get to a realm of persuasion. When nothing can shake you. Say amen. amen. Listen. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Because life will challenge it at any level. Ask any leader. Life will challenge your convictions from head to toe. And the gates will only open. When you prove that you merit it openly. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. Rewards for consistency. Rewards for persuasion. Hallelujah. Are we together? When the Holy Spirit comes, please listen. When the Holy Spirit comes upon a believer at new birth, I want you to know that the coming of the Holy Spirit in every one believer that gives his life to Christ introduces the presence of God to that man's life. A presentation of the presence of the Father. The Bible tells us again and again. Is that true? So when the Holy Spirit comes, listen, comes to live in you, he represents the presence of God. And with him, Kabbalah Kataya, is a measure of God's ability at work in you. Everybody say God's ability. Say it one more time. God's ability. Say God's energy say God's capacity when the Holy Spirit dwells in a man his presence comes with a measure of God's ability at work in that man now whether or not you know it whether or not you use it is a different thing but that is the truth because scripture cannot be broken are we together now so when the Holy Spirit comes he comes with a measure of God's ability this is very interesting because the kingdom was designed never to function absolutely by the strength of man. Listen, the changes that humanity requires cannot be affected just by the, the strength of man. It cannot just be affected by intellect. It cannot just be affected by kindness and charity. It takes more than that. It takes an ability that is supernatural. 
it takes the ability of God to bring transformation not just preaching do you know what it means to speak to a man and just by speaking make that man change his ideologies an ideology that he has hold or he's held true for decades and then in one meeting you speak and he's persuaded enough it's called utterance not oratory oratory is the ability to speak well you learn that in school utterance is the capacity to communicate spiritual realities on the strength of God's ability such that the listener is able to enter into your experience that is utterance it's not oratory what we have in church is oratory but we need utterance it's a gate that gives you access to the ability of the spirit to persuade men such that they subscribe to the value system of the kingdom are we together so the ability of the holy spirit that brings it that divine life many christians jump and about having the divine life but we do not see the evidence of that divine life that divine life that dwells within you and it comes with a measure of the ability of the spirit if you do not recognize that there is an ability of the spirit that is at work in you you will rob yourself of the capacity to function like god god gave us his ability so that we can produce his result listen listen only god's kind of result can bring change and impact in our world only god's kind of result can bring blessings only god's kind of result can bring lifting only god's kind of result can bring transformation if you're with me say amen god's ability that's what we call power that's what we call the anointing the anointing is not oil the anointing is God's energy, His very ability. We define power in physics as what? Work done per unit time, energy expended. That's exactly the definition of the ability of God. His capacity, when God wants to do anything, He depends on His ability. And so when He sends you as His ambassador, He gives you His ability. God's ability. Say it again, God's ability. One definition of frustration is to try to achieve God's kind of result with your ability. You will see how crippled you look in life. Say after me, I have the ability of God. How many people have gone to sick people out of zeal and kindness? You are sick, Sam. In the name of Jesus, be healed. By their ability, they want to see God's result. But they are conscious of their ability. No. It is not given to man. Please hear me. It is not given to man to produce God's result with his ability. How many pastors and churches are frustrated because they are trying to get growth? They are trying to get this and, and all kinds of teachings. It takes the ability of God. Shout it, God's ability. Listen, listen. I'm telling you this. Don't just allow the scientific world fool you. The realm of the spirit controls the physical realm. It was James the apostle that told us, For as the body without the spirit, there must be a spirit component to everything for it to work. I don't care what it is if there is no spirit component it is there there must be a spirit component to business there must be a spirit component to your academics there must be a spirit component to marriage i love you i love you is not enough there must be a spirit component there must be a spirit component to anything that we do the problem is many times we ignore the spiritual side because we think it is not necessary oh my goodness oh my goodness how helpless a man is brothers and sisters how helpless in the face of this cruel life there are gates on every mountain there are giants on every mountain it doesn't take stories to move them it takes the ability There are devils standing on the gates of your finances. It takes the ability of God.
Why do we need the ability of God? It's his power to effect changes. Listen. Change can never occur until the power of God is present in a place. Any kind of change. The ability to effect change from healings to miracles to soul winning to transformation. It is entirely dependent on the ability of God. There are so many people who try to do evangelism sincerely from their heart, but there is no ability. How many times have we stood in the face of situations that honestly demand the touch of God? But we know that we are short of God's ability. God gave you his ability so that you can truly produce change. The Bible says in John chapter 15, it says, Hearing is my father glorified. When you bear much fruit, so then shall ye be my disciples. God wants us to bear fruit, but it takes an ability ability higher and greater than yourself are you getting what I'm saying the second reason why we need the ability of God is to be able to produce supernatural results please write it down supernatural results if your results are natural the world does not have space for you the 21st century does not have space for natural results the minimum standard in our world today is a supernatural it takes an ability of God for a mortal man to produce results out of proportion hmm. the Bible says they were astonished when they saw Jesus Christ and they saw the kinds of results that he was producing let me tell you something don't ever allow anybody preach you into thinking results do not matter. In the school of greatness, only God sees the heart. Men can only see the outward appearance. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't ever let anyone fool you. It's God that can see the heart. You can die with your good intentions. If you want to influence men, you must let your light shine. Not let your light glow. It must shine for men to see, not angels. God wants them to see it. It is in the seeing that they become persuaded. Therefore, permit your light to so shine before men that they may see your good works and as a result, glorify your Father. John 17 verse 1, Jesus was speaking. He said, now the hour has come. He was speaking to the Lord. He said, glorify now thy son. To the end that thy son will bring you glory. So the only way God is glorified is when we are glorified. Our glorification is a means to an end, not an end in itself. It gives God the opportunity. Because no man can praise himself. You need another to praise you. It's against the law of greatness for you to praise yourself. When you praise yourself, it's called arrogance. When another man praises you, it's called honor. Hallelujah. So we need the ability of God to produce changes. There are people here who are sick. It doesn't take stories. We can shout and jump around and just make a lot of noise. When they tell your dad in the office or your mom, we are going to fire you. Brothers and sisters, it takes the ability of the spirit to change it. When the landlord tells you tomorrow, if you cannot bring your money, you are out. It takes what? The ability of God. The problem is this. We have ignored the ability of God in the church. We believe in God, but we have ignored his ability. That anointing, that agency of the spirit that empowers men to produce change and to produce results. This ministry, by the grace of God, is a testimony of God's ability. The ability of God walking through men. And I want that to become your testimony from tonight. That tonight you will give up on just trying to get things happen by your strength. When you depend on God's ability, you will see results that are out of proportion. Praise the Lord. Tonight is a very simple teaching. Until the ability 
that is within a believer is released he can never be a blessing to his generation i want you to know this until the ability that is resident within a believer is released not acquired not gotten your being anointed does not make any meaning to your generation until that anointing is released the release of that ability is what brings about blessings the bible says no man lights a lamp and puts it under a bush no man does that but you the purpose of lighting it is so that it can give illumination and direction so until the ability or the anointing is released the believer can never be a blessing you only become a blessing when you allow the measure of God's ability in you to find expression in your physical world the Bible says and the word became flesh and did what it now dwelt among men and they beheld the glory they could never behold the glory for as long as it was in the realm of the spirit but when it became flesh Shadrach, it's good to see you. I'm happy seeing my people. Praise the Lord. The word became flesh. The anointing that God has given you, when it translates into wisdom that men can relate with, when it translates into creativity that men can relate with, when it translates into dunamis power, the capacity to produce change here and now, then Christ is glorified. Otherwise, we'll keep talking a lot of stories. That which is resident within you must find expression for Christ to be glorified. Are we together now? Now, the problem with many of us seated here is not that we are not anointed. It's not that the hand of God is not upon our lives. But that inability to understand the dynamics of expressing the ability of God is what has crippled us. And so we stand before mountains we can walk over and yet we cry before them. The reason is because we have not come to a point where we realize that the ability of God is at work in us. Moses, listen, Moses stood before the Red Sea. God did not add anything to him. Right there, there was the ability to cross over. But he was afraid. When he went back, God just said, why are you coming to me? I gave you a rod. The word is in your mouth. Tell the people to move forward. He went back and did what he would have done in the first place. Do you know that many times when you go to God, most of the things you get from Him is comfort because actually you have the ability to do what you do. But just because our psychology is built around just hearing something from God, and so God said, It is well, now go. And then you get up and go. You would have done that right away. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Your going and that reception of comfort was just to encourage you. But all the while the ability was within you when he appeared to Gideon in the book of Judges chapter 6 when he looked at him what did he call him oh thou mighty man of failure but Gideon was hiding there was no special impartation service he just said Gideon what is going on ah, Gideon said God you too you know what is going is happening and he began to tell him how that he was going to go and defeat the Midianites there is an ability within you I'll never forget the first time God told me this thing. Listen, it's not enough to know God is mighty. This was a song that gave me that revelation. You know this song, Lord, you reign forever. Lord, you reign forever. I worship you. Years ago, I was singing this song. I worship you. This was the part that changed me. You reign, you reign. You reign, you reign. That's you talking to the Lord. And I heard it very clearly like a man singing back to me. This was what I heard. You reign, cause I reign. You reign, cause I reign. You reign. This is what God is telling me back. He's responding to my worship and saying, Son, it's not enough to know I reign. There's no confusion about that. The trouble is here on earth. So reign because I reign. Now that you are aware, I've told you you are like me. I expect a legislation that is consistent with what is happening in heaven. That way the kingdom comes. It's not enough to say, Lord, I know you are reigning. What is happening to us here? We are dying. Keep reigning. Let's keep dying. No, no. It says thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done where in the earth not in heaven there is no confusion about order in heaven the confusion is here so he says rain and it gave me an understanding not just this thing people jump around i'm a king i'm a king and go and die like a fool you jump based on knowledge and revelation see you can have something and you can take it anywhere believe me i know what i'm saying a man can have something and you can hold on to it and run with it that's what god is speaking to us here. he reigns so you reign he reigns so you reign so he expects you to legislate Listen, listen. A man called St. Patrick. Have you heard about St. Patrick? A man called St. Patrick. The son of the king had died for six months. How many months? Six months. They had buried him. And he was, he was bringing a lot of catastrophe. And that man called St. Patrick walked straight to the grave and signed his name on it. St. Patrick. And they opened it and dug out a human being alive. It's in history men who knew they had something not independent of god listen with god all things are possible i've demonstrated it for you here come promise can i use you again with promise all things are possible without him some things are no longer possible but with him the word with god here means in partnership in partnership that's why we call it koinonia in partnership there is an ability you and God constitute an unbeatable team. Have you watched wrestling? How they can beat somebody as if they are passing him through a meat machine. And then on the other side, his colleague is there bouncing and saying, touch me. Show that you, you, you are weak, but we are a tag team. Is that true? If you win, we share the money together. If you lose, we lose together. It's a partnership and so the holy ghost is standing and telling you look look you have been going around this mountain why don't you come into partnership with me there is an ability within you listen listen there is an ability it's called energies the greek word is energies it says now unto him philippians 3 uh, uh, 20 unto him who is able he has an ability to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or think not according to his might according to the power that works not in heaven in you in you the possibilities in your life are dependent on activating the anointing and the ability of the spirit within you And so, like the wrestling, someone lifts his hands. And have you seen the way people touch the other? I mean, they almost have no strength. And they touch somebody else and he jumps in and plays nonsense with the one who has been beating his colleague. And wins. And then he holds the guy who is a team together. And they lift the belt together. He doesn't lift the belt and say, you, when you are tired, stand up and walk home. He lifts him and says, we won. Listen. I'm bringing you into a revelation that your victory starts from the standpoint, a consciousness that with you and the Holy Ghost, never do anything outside of the Holy Ghost. You will fail. It's not a prophecy. It was designed to happen that way. Master, we have toiled all night, but in partnership with your word, let's go back and watch a miracle. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? prophet elijah outside of the holy spirit he could not say anything he said look guys you want prophecy from me i can't move my human ability cannot do anything but play me a mistrial and the moment they began to play when the holy ghost came upon him he said now i have something to say fill these ditches with water you may not see wind you may not see rain yet the valley shall be filled with water Listen, that is not yet possible in your life does not mean it is not possible.
It's amazing how a challenge can be killing you and somebody will come and pass it as if it does not exist. There is an ability that sponsors that audacity. And I want you to know that if you are in Christ, that ability is within you. There is an ability. I walk conscious of this. Every time I go to minister, I walk conscious of this. And the Lord walking with them. And the Holy Spirit walking, not just in Joshua Selman, but with Joshua Selman. There is a partnership, it's a koinonia. We are inseparable. It's like the a salt covenant. Where I am foolish, I trust his wisdom. Where I am confused, there is strength. When I stand before a sick body, I know, I am very aware, I'm intelligent enough to know that you cannot squeeze out cancer from somebody and it disappears at once. I'm smart enough to know that that cancer is matter. It has weight. It can occupy space. But then when his ability comes, hmm. when his ability comes, that's when the difference. See, listen. Don't trivialize what I'm sharing with you. This is your recipe. This is your key to unstoppable, unstoppable exploits in the kingdom. The ability of the spirit. Thank you. Let's take a few things. I want us to pray. Let's take down a few things. You must allow the measure of God's anointing within you to find expression and produce testimonies in the lives of people. Just two or three things I'll say again and then we'll pray. God's ability in a man can grow and it can increase. The ability of God that is resident within a man can grow. Every living thing grows. God's ability is alive and so it can grow. That you have received a measure of that ability. Listen, listen. The ability of the spirit in a man is like currency. Let me explain to you something. Please look up. Please look up. Who has money? Somebody give me money. 1,500, 100. Thank you. Watch this. If this is 200 naira, how many things can 200 naira buy? 200 naira can buy a bottle of minerals. Is that true? Can it buy wine? But is it money? At least it can buy some things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now let me explain to you something about God's ability. God's ability in you can only solve problems that are within the range of the dimension of that ability. Anything higher than that measure, watch this, that measure cannot be solved, although you have the ability. Listen, listen, listen. I want you to get this. The ability of the spirit, the anointing of the spirit at work in people is in levels. And there are possibilities that are activated within that level and that measure. Are you getting what I'm saying? When the measure of God's ability is at work in you, every problem, every giant, every mountain that is within that range of power will be solved. But everything higher than it will remain an obstacle. Get this revelation and you will see the reason why although you are anointed, some things have not changed. Praise the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Thank you. Just like this currency, watch this. This is 200 naira. It can buy wine. Mama put, you can eat something with this now. Yam and, and akarankose. Watch this. I can eat akarankose at Mama put with this. Comfortably. With dignity. Can this take you to a five-star hotel, the restaurant? But is this money? So what do you need to do if you want to go to a five-star hotel? Increase the same thing. Not a different thing. Increase a measure of the very same thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Listen. That you have a measure does not mean the challenges in life respond to measures of the anointing. Measures of graces. Don't let any man fool you that the moment you have an ability, it can solve every problem. It's not true. Those who talk those things have not worked in the anointing. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. This is what I work in every day. It's like a range. 
when you upgrade on the level of the anointing that's why the bible says he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet but i got to a level where that would not be enough again then he had to measure a thousand cubits and the river increased and it was to my knees are we together now and then he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my lungs then he measured a thousand cubits and it was an overflowing river and he said everywhere that river went whatever was dead came alive there are different levels of the anointing the ability of the spirit so a mountain can jump and leave and you go to another mountain and you can be shouting everything you know and the mountain steers you there are sick bodies that we may struggle around with in many crusades in nigeria and those sick bodies can be there let benny hill step in just two songs of worship i guarantee you not he has not even if he's talking about relationship it doesn't matter he can even teach on how to be a nice housewife and while he is teaching see the anointing does not care what is happening it whenever it sees a need and a demand for it it flows there immediately are you getting what i'm saying now so god's ability in you responding to a situation you can have a challenging issue that looks like a mountain and someone comes with the ability of god and brings a dimension of wisdom you never thought of and dissolves that thing in one minute and it's over case closed the ability of the spirit that was what happened to daniel they were about to slaughter them and kill them and he said ah, ah why is the king hasty in this all these people have tried their ability he said please just give us time and the bible says in the night the secret was revealed to daniel and he got up in the morning and answered the king same thing happened to joseph see how men took their generations by the ability of the spirit joseph did not become a prime minister because of interpretation of dreams joseph became a prime minister because he offered a very serious supernatural solution to the problem if he had interpreted dreams they would have said okay we have had you please um water go and lock him up and he would have just gone back highest they would have given him a day off and he's back to the prison but he was smart enough in addition to the dream he said i know this is the answer this is what we should do and when he said that look at him i love joseph he said oh king find a man he knew there was no man find a man check around don't trivialize my grace find a man if you can find another man with it no problem and the king said is he not here we kept quarreling asking people to come and interpret the dreams where can we find such a man that's why we worship the lord truly because there is nobody like him are you getting what i'm saying that's the reason why we worship him we love him searched all over couldn't find nobody i looked high and low still couldn't find nobody nobody prayed nobody prayed no nobody prayed than you listen there is something the spirit of god will do to you that this song will become for you no, not just for god I want you to always be conscious of God can give you a territory my brothers and my sisters I want you to listen to me God can put something upon your life that will make let me not go ahead of myself That you come to a point where there is something in you without any show of pride you know it's not cheap and you know it's not what you find by the roadside listen when you explore the ability of God in you from border to border you will enter your Sabbath experientially I guarantee you the Bible says now there remaineth a rest for the people of God Hebrews chapter 4 right and he says let us therefore labor the word labor there is content even as unto death to enter that rest for he that has entered that rest has ceased from his works
There are two ways the ability of God in you can grow. Number one is by revelation. 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 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge. Grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. Through knowledge. The word knowledge there is the word translated epignosis. A comprehension of truth that makes the person who is knowing it and what is known become one. Not just awareness. It's actually the word that is interpreted intercourse. So grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. Hallelujah. Revelation. When light comes to you, then you will arise. The Bible says, they that sat in darkness, they have seen a great light. Great light. Arise and shine, Isaiah 60. It says, for your light is come. Not your light is around. The light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, it's one revelation God gave me. Watch this. Please, if you are, if you are a minister of the gospel here, let me share with you a secret. Please look up. Money does not make a great ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't let any man fool you. Money does not make a great ministry. It is impact that makes a great ministry and supplies finances. Financing ministry is a product of impact. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Impact. And this is how it happens. When your light starts shining, Gentiles will come. Unbelievers, drug addicts, all kinds of people will come. Kings will never come to your light. When you become consistent and you keep growing, it will start attracting. Brightness and excellence is a language. There are those who know how to speak it. The moment you start speaking their language, they will come. It says, Gentiles shall come to your light. There is a level of ministry where all you see are Gentiles. People who are coming to be saved, those coming to be sick, somebody dragging his trolley of problems and coming to dump it and then you have to work on it, but the time will come. As your light begins to become bright, like the day, kings will start coming. Kings don't come to your light. They come to the brightness. The brightness of your rising. And when they come like Queen Sheba, they will not come empty-handed. They will come with their bounties. They will come with their blessings. The wise men from the east, when they saw Jesus Christ, they came with gold. They came with frankincense. They came with myrrh. They came to honor him. Every time there is brightness, it begins to draw certain kinds of people. So, there are many men of God who are trying to look for money. They are trying to look for money because they think money makes an impactful ministry. What an error. It doesn't work that way. Money is only a reward. Money is a receipt for doing something. Right? We've learned it here. When you get money as a man of God, it's a receipt. Just like you buy something. The receipt means you have paid for it, not you will pay for it. The receipt is an evidence that something has been done, not is being done, not will be done. But the problem is we trivialize the ability of the spirit in us. How many of us have looked like Gideon and felt that there is nothing within us? Oh, there is that great man of God there. There is that great woman of God there. And we forget. Mary was there standing and an angel appears to her and says, Blessed are you, women among this and that and that. And then he told her that she was going to carry a child. And she said, How shall these things be? In other words, naturally this should not happen. Seeing that I know not a man. And the angel said something, which is key for us this night. He says, The power of the highest. That's how it happens. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. How can I be the last born in my family and yet I'm the one God will use to wipe the tears of people? He says the power of the highest. There is an ability of the spirit that can come upon you. The second key to growing in the anointing and in God's ability is impartation 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 is a transference of spiritual virtues 
transference of spirits, transference of possibilities. A man who is a possessor of a dimension of possibility can share it. Like you use a candle to light another. It is a possibility in the spirit. That's the character of the dimension of God's ability called dunamis. It's an ability that is capable of being reproduced. Listen. I've said it again and again. A true leader does not maintain followers. A true leader reproduces himself and turns followers into leaders. If Joshua Selman remains a superstar and an anointed man, everybody keeps clapping, I have failed. From the world's perspective and from the perspective of mediocres, we keep clapping. But let me tell you something. God's dimension of measure or his index of measuring success it's not just by the crowd we have inside and outside. It is the individuals becoming a replica of his grace and anointing and his ability. God measures success one by one. He doesn't measure success by a crowd. Thank God for all of that. It's an evidence of the hand of God. But if we are to sample 10 people at random and engage you with spiritual challenges and see how you are able to navigate through the dynamics of the operation of the spirit, it is a true measure of the success of this ministry. The ability to be empowered and carry that conviction and go and begin to produce results around your sphere of influence. And I insist that it must happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ. So impartation and revelation. Write this down very quickly. The channels for releasing the ability of God. The ability of God must be released. Please, burn this into your mind. I'm being very simple tonight because I want us to have this basic understanding before we pray. The anointing, the ability of the spirit must be released for people to be blessed by it. It must be released. It's not just the obtaining of the ability of God, but the dispensing. The release of it. That's what brings blessings to people. God's ability. God's ability. Is working in me. Is working in me. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. Sing it with me. God's ability, God's ability is working in me, is working in me. And so when a mountain stands before you and you carry this ability, you will move with audacity. Humanly speaking, you should chicken out. Come on. But I love David. David stands with a sling, conscious of an ability that is bigger than him. And Goliath said, am I a dog? I know I will kill you, but at least respect me. Come with knife. As if you are fighting a man. And David said, I will not, I will disgrace you. Let me even tell you how I will kill you. This is what will happen. This sling will hit you and I will remove your head. It's God's ability. When you see men do supernatural things, brothers and sisters, I want you to know it's God's ability. What you see happening tonight is God's ability. The energy, the very strength of God manifested as wisdom, manifested as power, manifested as faith, manifested the, the ability of God is what we call grace. Whether grace to become or grace to do is all called grace and it's God's ability. That's what makes men champions. 
That's what makes men wonderful people. Is the ability of God. The ability of God is like a programming. It's like a software. When it enters you, you are infected. There's nothing you can do about it. The moment you carry it, your environment begins to respond. That's the treasure that we have in earthen vessels. It's not about the vessel, but the treasure. And God designed it. The only way you benefit from the treasure is to carry the vessel along. That's the reason why when a man is anointed, you don't bring out the anointing and keep him. You carry the man too. As you honor the anointing, you honor him. When you bless the anointing, anointing cannot eat. It's the vessel that eats it. As his benefit for paying attention. He's working in me. Look at the Bible. Full of people who took advantage of this divine ability. If you get this one thing I'm teaching you, you will change your life in a remarkable way. Hallelujah. Play this mic. Aaron sent me a text before I came here, Pastor. And um, he sent me a text and said, Man of God, I want you to explain to me what exactly happened in Port Harcourt. And then I looked and he said I was going to talk with him. I shared my Port Harcourt story. I shared it here, right? Pastor, he came from Port Harcourt. It's a land of greatness and a land of plenty. Listen, I was going to Port Harcourt and all I had, watch this, although God has corrected me recently because I've been running my mouth saying things, I've grown now. God has corrected me recently. In one of my retreats, I've been corrected. So I will I update my curriculum. Because I keep saying all I had was my bag. That bag was a seed. I know the kind of faith that brought that bag. That bag was a seed. I remember dragging that bag and the ministry was about this size then. Everybody. And they were all escorting me. As if they were going for a funeral. And that was how we went to the park. That park, in, um, that park on your way to Kaduna. Just this one, yes. That Kwangila Park. And they dropped me there and I was laughing. They were pity because they knew, aside from my bus fare, all I had left, home and abroad, in terms of monetary value, was 800 Naira. And I was going to a land I had never gone to. But I did not, like the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4, I forgot that I had an ability. I kept looking at my rickety bag and all of this. Listen. I dropped at number 23, Quarry Street, around to 2 in the afternoon. When I dropped there, I knew I was stupid for sure. Because no right-thinking human being would do what I had done. And I stopped there, 800 Naira. And I knew it would be foolish for me to try to look for a hotel to stay. So the closest thing was at least to finish up the 800 Naira and eat something with it. So I went to one, my mother was sharing something. And watch this. One thing I knew was that I was going to reign in that land. I didn't know how to describe it, but I knew there was an ability. Sometimes you need to come to the end of your road to now find out what you have been calling spare part, whereas that is all you need. Second Kings chapter 4. The woman lost everything. The husband used the children as collateral. When everything had gone, the prophet said, what do you have in your house? He said, nothing except. And he said, you call it except? The vessel is only, the oil is small because of the vessel that took it, not because it is small. When you expand capacity, the oil will increase with it. He said, the oil is much. It's only because the oil was housed in a small vessel, borrow vessel. Enlarge your capacity. And when that woman did that, she became rich with it. So I went there. I'll never forget when I was eating the Holy Spirit just sent a signal to my spirit and I found out one of my friends that used to live there and I called him and I told him I'm here this and that and that can I come and stay for a while and then I came I went to the house and I stayed there listen my money had finished let me tell you what happened I was broke there was I mean things were bad then his sister was sick when his sister was sick I wasn't happy that she was sick. Don't misunderstand me. But at least I was comforted that 
something <laughs> listen undertakers are not happy that people die but at least it is the make <laughs> are you getting what i'm saying now and so when she said she was sick i prayed for her when she was healed she came with a seed of 1000 naira listen that 1000 naira was what i used to buy my suit to do my first ministration the suit was not what you sell around the suit was this kind you see this kind that they move around with it you just call the man listen let me tell you a secret it's better than many things they hang around nobody will know it's only you that will know ah. oh yes are we together now i remember my friend in abuja calling one pastor in port Harcourt and say a mighty man of god is in town and he said all kinds of things about me and the man said and then it happened to be that the man was from my state watch this no 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 play that thing i'm going to sing this song a lot this song we started that's our special number for this night that god's ability song listen god is my witness when I took a bike to go and see the pastor, he hosted us and another person. We ate in his house and then he went to go and introduce me to the church. As soon as I stepped into the building, my eyes were open and I gave the pastor three prophecies. Three prophecies in the church. Are you with me? Three days after the prophecy, the first one happened. 0.5 million came into the church. The overseer said, call that man. He's coming to preach on Sunday. Ah! There is an ability, oh, it can open doors. When all else fail, Makata Labada. Yes, many things in life can fail. Don't trust them. The real capital in your life is the anointing. That one is fail proof. Certificate can fail. Internet can fail. Brother, when all else fails, reach out deep down. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. Listen, I went to the church. I bought the suit with the money. I can't remember how much. Dress looks smart. You will never know. Because I, I refused to. I knew that my present was a thing I just had to manage with. In my mind, I was light years ahead of my present. So I wasn't embarrassed by it. Because I knew my physical reality will necessarily, necessarily become my mindset and my perspective. When I went there on that Sunday morning, it was a Sunday morning. I was on my way to come and they sent me the message to preach. They said I should preach about vow. I said I fasted for three days for this opportunity. And you are now sending me the message. God had already given me a word. Listen, the man with the church was a prophet. He doesn't come out until after the service. When you finish preaching, he will now come out and do his thing. When I stepped in and I looked at the people, I had never seen a congregation of people who were that demonized. And um, there was, you know, we are used to, we write our songs in Zaria, right? So it's very difficult to sing these songs outside because we write our songs. We receive them, we compose them. And I didn't know the kind of song to raise because... Uh, I wasn't used to all those songs. Our songs, you can be humming for 30 minutes. You don't do that there. There was one song that I remember. Now is the time for the new anointing. Gird up your loins and be ready. Every yoke of bondage surely must be broken. That was the song I raised. My goodness. That meeting, that meeting was something else. It was, it, was, it was an amazing meeting. You can imagine the things that God did. After that meeting, I had honorarium. I ate in the house of the pastor. They took me to another place. You know how they are. They are not like the not here that ignore your grace till you die. <laughs> right there, once they see grace, they celebrate it immediately. It's not in the notes that they will just look and say, can you help me? No. They know how to, am I lying, pastor? Come on now. They celebrate grace very generously. And so we went there. And from that meeting, they said two weeks after the church was going to have a convention and I was going to be their major speaker. Listen, from that time, 
it was one meeting after one meeting after one encounter after one encounter after one encounter after one encounter and within six months my life had changed changed in a way I didn't even know where I was coming from again it had so changed the road had deleted behind me never to return there again that's why I never forget his ability when all else fail today I've stood before kings I've stood before politicians none of my certificates have brought me before these people but an ability of the spirit are you hearing what I'm saying so don't ignore it especially for some of you who are in school read your book but don't fool yourself the world we live in needs an ability of the spirit needs an ability of the spirit let's finish up hmm. the primary channel for releasing God's ability is your words 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 where the word of a king is there is power Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me the spirit entered me when he spake unto me the spirit entered me when he spake unto me an impartation a dispensing of that anointing he said and it set me upon my feet listen there are people sitting now hearing me you will stand up from this meeting and it's like something will suddenly rise within you and you will say I know I may not be any other thing but I'm anointed I may not be any other thing Kabbalah I was teaching the school of ministry students and I taught them no matter what society says you are not they may be right but they are wrong when they say you are not anointed they may be right they may say you are not fine it may be true they may say you are from a background where the map of your village was not added when they were you don't even use GPS to find it they are right but if they ignore the anointing they are wrong the anointing will make nations follow you on their knees and it will be a privilege for them to receive of your grace you will be standing surprised while they are saying thank you God's ability is released through words. Number three, your hands. Listen, please look up. I know that many of us have ignored our hands. I want everybody to look at your hands if you can. These hands. It's working in you. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in you. He's working in you. Listen. These hands you see, brothers and sisters, a hand is a mystery in the realm of the spirit. A hand is not what holds people. That's why the Bible talks about the right hand of God. It talks about the hand of God. The hands are also doors in the spirit. They are channels for releasing the anointing. The work of a man is done through his hand. When you realize that there is an ability on your hands, it will bring upon your life creativity. It will bring upon your life innovations. You will do things through your hands you will never believe possible. These hands, these hands can open the gates of nations to you. These hands can bring kingdoms to their knees. These hands can swing the two leap gates of your destiny open. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. Brothers and sisters, you are getting blessed right now because I am speaking. You are not hearing English. 
Some of you, you don't even know what is happening to you as you are listening to me. You don't know whether you should sit down, whether you should stand up because there is an ability. My mouth is a window. It's a window revealing the realm of the spirit. It's a window communicating the secret place. Something is happening to your spirit as you are receiving. This is not a lecture. This is not a lecture. It's an ability. The power of the Holy Ghost is working in you. <laughs> He's working in you. It's God's ability. God's ability is working in you. It's working in you. And so as you speak, the opening of your mouth is like the opening of the portals in the spirit. And you begin to speak. As you communicate those realities, you are changing people. They don't even know what is happening to them. They just know that there is an activity. It's not English. It's not oratory. It's called utterance. 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 It's by the ability of the spirit. It's not a lecture. You are changing men. You are using words to bring them in to an experience they cannot explain the ability of God walking in a man and so the spirit enters you the words come with fire the words come with illumination they do something to your spirit man it's like light some of you sometimes you don't even know what you are receiving you can't tell what is happening to you it's like hammer it's like fire you can't tell it's an ability it comes help that many please it comes from heaven an ability of the spirit God's ability be sensitive I sense the anointing of the Holy Spirit already moving well, pray. it's working in me that's what I want you to become. So anointed, so full of his ability. The Bible says even God who quickened the dead and uses his mouth to call things. He uses his mouth to make things happen that would not have happened. The prophet said by this time he was not revealing, he was creating. It wouldn't have happened. His words created it. Is working in me. Listen, many of us have been speaking. It's time for us to be communicators of light and power. It's time for us to be communicators of divine reality. I see the angels of the Lord pouring what looks like oil on people. This is what I see. It's like an anointing coming on people. Strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. God's ability. It's an ability. It's an ability of the Holy Ghost. That the opening of your mouth is a gate in the spirit. Working in me. Working in me. God's ability. It's God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. Shake a tabala da ba 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 ba. God's ability. It's God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. Sing it with me, everybody. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's God's ability. It's God's ability. It's working in me. Listen. Listen. The third way the ability of God is dispensed is through the instrument of your atmosphere hmm. listen when you carry the ability of god that ability creates like a spiritual electromagnetic field around you anybody that comes within that atmosphere 
possibilities just like many of you are under this atmosphere right now and then sicknesses will leave just by themselves without any prayer there is an ability of the spirit when Saul came into an atmosphere where there was a principality called Samuel the atmosphere affected him and the spirit of prophecy fell upon him when the ability of God is at work in you your atmosphere has prophetic implications your atmosphere has prophetic implications it's working in me yeah. hallelujah ability is released by faith you release the ability of God by faith let me explain to you what I mean the ability of the spirit listen is released on the strength of conviction your persuasion about who God is and what he has put in you sponsors your audacity to take action Action based on that consciousness is called faith. We've taught a lot of dogma about faith. Faith is nothing based on just human asset. Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your persuasion of who God is. And then the Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word. Listen, the anointing of the Spirit is the principal capital in your life please hear me action that is based on your conviction as action that is based on expectation by the ability of the spirit so your hands you expect that people will receive impartations this is how it works brothers and sisters there is an ability in you there is an ability in you you must know this there is an ability in you it's, it's not it's not about some gimmicks please this is not even about falling down it's called the mystery of godliness where god can dwell in a man so your body is like a puppet they are seeing you but there is another agency at work it's called the ability of God. That's what will make you a wonder. Men will keep looking. When they think they have exhausted you, then you come from another dimension because you are connected to a supply that is eternal, not bounded with time, no fatigue. It's not bounded to the limitations of this system. It's the ability of God. The ability of God. Reproduce again and again and again and again. It's not about trial and error. You can gain mastery in the dispensing of his ability. Yes, yes. Strong meat belongs to those who are of full age, who by reason of use, they have gained mastery. It's like fighting. God's ability. It's God's ability. He's working in me. That's why we can tell you to come for this meeting. And we can guarantee that you will be blessed. Yes, we can guarantee, not on the strength of the flesh. There is an ability. No man's hardness can stand it. No matter how stubborn you are, it doesn't make any difference. Because when he shows up, the Bible says the voice of God upon the waters is mighty. Listen. This is what happens in the teachings. There are many people here who have come from other places and they cannot explain what happens to them when they listen to these teachings. It's not so much about the revelation. There is an ability in it that compels compliance. It's called anakazo. It's a Greek word. It's the compelling power of the spirit. It is with that ability that we can prophesy over your life and your job and it will change. Listen, it's not just saying change, change, receive. 
and all those things are garbages. What is the ability that sponsors it? For I am a man on that authority, he says. And on the strength of that authority, I tell one, go, and he will go. I tell one, come, and he will come. How can cancer die? God's ability. How can a jobless person get a job before Monday? God's ability. How can a, a, a life... I mean, come on, think about it, people. It's the ability of the Spirit. It's not by might. It's not by power. There is an ability bigger than your effort, bigger than your strength. It's God's ability. Help them, please. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. There are three rewards when you can press to manifest the ability of God. There are three rewards. Reward number one is to become a desirable personality. Nations will desire you because you carry that which is needed. They may criticize you, but they will desire you. There is too much darkness in this world for the careers of the anointing to be ignored. It has nothing to do with ministry. That's the key to being an ambassador. The nations will look for you when you carry this capital called the anointing it will open gates you will become Bula you will become Hevziba the delight some land you will become greatly desired when you carry this anointing listen I have met men and women that no level of qualification in life would have given me access to them at this level. And I am amazed. I am amazed. I travel all the time. And I am humbled. People love me from regions to regions. It's not just that they love Joshua Selman. Many of them don't even know me. There is something. When you carry it, you become a joy of nations. When you carry that anointing, you become desirable. The anointing will make up for your weaknesses. It will make up big time. Listen. Listen. Years ago, there was somebody who wanted to go to NDA. And there is a height, there is a level to which if you are not as tall as that height, they will not take you. And the person who wanted to go there was lower than that height. And when he went, they dismissed him. And he went and met the Emir of Zaria. And the Emir of Zaria sent him with delegates that they should go and tell the commandant and the people that the Emir has added his height. Did you hear what I said? That the Emir has added his height and they took him. That's what the anointing does. Where you cannot enter, others are entering because they are intelligent. Others are entering because they have connection. When they come, they ask you, what do you have? And then you say, God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. Listen, they may, they can't ignore you for too long. It won't be too long, somebody will be confused. You will be needed immediately. It won't be too long, somebody will be sick. Demons are still on earth, which guarantees that you remain valuable. Listen, listen, for as long as there is a demand for your anointing, you remain valuable. Business tells us, until you have something, you are unnecessary. Matalababa, the anointing keeps you valuable forever. 
Stocks can rise and fall. Oil can rise and fall. But the anointing has equal value in every territory. God's ability. Listen. When you carry Naira, when you carry Naira, as soon as you get to London with Naira, Naira is no longer valuable. Is that true? You have to change it to another currency. When you travel to Israel, you have to change the pounds or euro to shekels to be able to use it. When you travel to Asia, you now have to change it to yen and the rest to use it. But the anointing, the way it works in Nigeria, when you get to UK, there is no translation, there is no downgrading. Same sickness, same demons, same challenges. Listen, rich men fall sick. Rich men get confused. Politicians get confused. Have you seen certain businesses that are only for certain people? You only sell pampas for children. Abi, and an adult who is sick, an old man. A young man doesn't need pampas. Are you getting what I'm saying? You, you only bab somebody like me who always wants his hair low. If you want to shine it, let it shine. This is the way you do it. But somebody who keeps his hair doesn't need it. There are certain things in life that are only for a group of people. The anointing is a master capital. It is relevant anywhere, everywhere, and at all times. You need it in business. You need it in your academics. You need it in marriage. Pursue me, students. You need it in your pursue me. No, 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 no. It's not just by the Y, the X. There is an ability. Let me tell you early enough. There is an ability of the spirit. Because you can write an exam well. And somebody can be marking your exam. And your script will fall down. There is an anointing that guarantees it remains there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number one, it brings you, it makes you greatly desired. Number two, the ability of God gives you favor with men. Ah. Please listen to my message, Activating Seasons of Greatness. Favor with men. And it does that in three dimensions. It gives you access to people access to resources and access to opportunities these are the three things any man needs to succeed access to people access to resources access to opportunities the anointing brings access not everything is solved by money access is greater than money access 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 Hallelujah. It's God's ability. Listen, we went Benin. We went Benin recently for a meeting. I say these things to encourage you. After the meeting, some people came in from Asaba and they shared a very touching testimony. And um, the pastors came in, great ministry, doing great things for God here. When they came in, they said this, that... They believe it to be an angel, but they said somebody at a point where the ministry really needed the hand of God. Somebody just entered with one of our teachings and gave them and left. Never to see him again. Never knew him. He was just somebody who came and dropped it and left. And the pastor said when they listened to it, they got all the information. And as at the time they were talking to me, they said they had over 200 of the messages. And it has revolutionized the people. There are people today who know me and love this ministry. I have never seen them. In fact, 75% of those who get blessed by this ministry who have never set our eyes. Some of them is just one message. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. If you think it's ordinary, try it. Just go online and put anything. I don't care what. Just put anything and invite people. There is an angel. There is an angel of the Lord's presence that signifies the word of God and sends it like an envoy hallelujah during my during my birthday i think we had compliments 
from over 16 nations. 16 nations of the world that have been blessed by the ministry. I've not gone to most of them. You see that? But then it's coming. There are people who take these messages by themselves and keep spreading. That's their ministry. That is like a covenant they signed with God. Brothers and sisters, tonight I want you to give up on your strength outside of God. I'm reducing your journey towards destiny. You will waste your time for nothing. And find out after 70 years that this is not how it works. But when the ability of God is upon you, it will make you a sign and a wonder. You will have unusual access. Access to things you will not pay for. The anointing will pay for things for you. Unusual access. Hallelujah. And finally, the third reward for the ability of the Spirit working in you is ever increasing honor. Honor. Let me tell you what honor is. Listen. Honor is not just recognition. Honor is the discernment of your uniqueness and the ability to reward it. If you are not rewarded for your uniqueness, it's not honor. You can be recognized. But when a man recognizes you and is willing to invest in you, that is honor. To honor is to esteem you with respect and dignity. And that you'll be rewarded for your blessings. Almost every day of my life, there are people blessing me, sowing seeds, doing all kinds of things. I sat down this morning and I was talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, what are you doing to me? This is more than I have bargained for. As soon as we arrived this evening, I just came in and when I came out, I was almost, sometimes you see me come and sit down and I just put my head down. I'm fighting tears many times because I remain humble at the hand of God. The kind of workers that God has given in this ministry, I think they, they are even, it looks like they believe in the ministry more than me. Tomorrow is a leader's retreat. And Sunday is the workers' week. Committed people with their life like madmen. You try to coordinate people like that and you see how easy it is. Of course they are trained. Of course there are principles. But the force of cohesion is the ability of the spirit. There is an anointing. Tonight, listen. I want everybody hearing the sound of my voice inside and outside. You're going to make up your mind tonight and say, Lord, I'm tired of this inferiority and complex. It may not have been your fault to have come from the background you came from, but it can change. I love my father. He's a great man. And I see most of the things that happened in my life with him as ignorance. But there was a time my father spoke to me and said, I was going to become a failure in this life. And his prayer is that I fail alone and not bring other people. About four years ago, my father got down on his knees and asked me to pray for him. The anointing of the spirit will make you a desire of nations. See, forget about the meager criticisms you will receive. It's nothing compared to the honor. It's one is to one million. It is totally negligible. Believe me. This is what I know. This is what my hands have handled. And I came with this word tonight. The anointing of the spirit is an equalizer. It can cover for everything that went wrong. So you no longer have an excuse. No matter what else fails. When you are anointed. You still remain valuable. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is. Hear me. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. We are going to pray. And tonight I want us to pray because many of us are going to receive. There will be a lot of impartations in this place tonight. Especially for some of us who just came newly. Don't just come naively. Open up your heart. 
let something fall on your life and change you forever. I have found my servant. Please give us Psalm 89. Verse 20. Psalm 89 verse 20. 89 verse 20. Help us media. That's why my secret place, listen. My secret place remains my greatest asset, not ministrations. The man of God, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, said something that blessed me one time. Listen. He said he was in the secret place praying and building and planning and something happened. A big man, supposedly a politician, big man, he came and spoke to him and said he wanted to see him. And uh, he was with God. One hour he didn't come out. Two hours he didn't come out. Three hours he didn't come out. And the wife was already getting embarrassed that how can you leave a big man like this? And they went to knock. And one of his daughters went to knock. And then he opened the door. And she was saying, Daddy, why? Attend to this man, let him go. And he looked at her compassionately. And he said, my daughter, sit down. He said, do you know why this man is here? He's here because of what I am doing. He's not here because he likes me. He's here because there is an anointing he needs. He needs direction. He needs a prophetic word. If I stop doing what I'm doing, he will not come back again. Let him wait. That's why my secret place is the greatest. You don't find me gallivanting around. I'm like a herbalist. You don't see me strolling around and then buying orange, peeling it and just moving around. No, because you are gathered here tonight because you love God. It is true. But you have come to hear a man who you consider to be anointed. And the only reason why you will keep coming and listening and the only reason why nations will keep coming is because of this ability. The miracle service is by the corner. There are sick people, HIV, cancer, all kinds of oppressed people in this place right now there are families that have traveled kilometers to come and they are trusting God for a touch and so the greatest publicity of a believer men of God get this is the secret place that's the place you receive strength that's the place you receive innovation that is where you receive wisdom it says I have found David my servant and with my holy oil, I smeared him with oil that activated an ability. Let's look at the next three verses. 21. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm shall also strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. 24 but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted he said thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side listen my prayer is that the least among us here will be as great as David but you know if you take it from the standpoint of intelligence there are people who are a thousand times more intelligent than you. Your advantage in the kingdom is the backing of the spirit. Ay, please listen. If you keep me side by side with brilliant people, I may not have too much to say. If you keep me side by side with intellectuals, I may have something to say, but maybe not much. If you keep me around older people, they have experience. I may only have little to say. If you keep me around people, the world is full of cynical people. Even if I want to bless them, they will not believe in me. Either because I'm not their tribe or because of certain parameters. So my bailout is the anointing. I got the anointing upon my life jealously. I can lose everything but not his presence and the anointing that it says, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horns. Listen, 
God can exalt the horn of a man. God spoke to us that this is the season of the rain. And the rain is already falling. I tell you, people's stories are changing. God is taking people to newer levels of wealth, newer levels of the anointing, newer levels of the spirit. Inside and outside, some of you are standing. There are no seats standing by the fence. Listen, you are face to face with destiny. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my soul. If you've never believed in the ability of God in you, I want you to believe it. Ephesians 3.20. And then we'll pray. Ephesians chapter 3, please, verse 20. Help us, media. Verse 20. 20. 320. Everyone read it together. Now unto him, who is the him? The almighty God, who is able to do. Say God is able to do. In me, whatever he desires. God is able to do in me. God is able to do in me. Years ago, when I saw these meetings, I, 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 I would say I didn't believe them, but it was difficult to explain it. See, let me tell you something. There are times a vision can be so great, there's no point trying to share it. Because nobody can understand. But only be consistent. When you begin to birth wonders, then the world will know. He's a mighty God. And I want you to believe me. He can change anyone's story. God can make you the song of many. Like David the song upon the mouth of women and children, young and old. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on the earth of all. All sing, all fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on the earth of all. of the deep cry out God you are mighty on your throne 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 instruction listen the lord is giving me an instruction 
there are at least 15 people that I see. A strong anointing is going to come upon them. Please let me have them outside here. Just those 15 people who are going to pray. But the Lord is ministering to me because he's activating something. It's a substance of the spirit upon those 15 people. I'm about to pray right now. And the angels of the Lord will separate those people mightily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Lord, where are those 15 people? Right now, in the name of Jesus, let the fire of God draw them out right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, inside and outside. Shkapata, sheketepeta, emkratos kalaba. I send the word in the realm of the spirit. Shekebarataba. Reketeteketete, sheketekelebosh. Let there be that activation. Inside and outside, those portals. I open it in the name of Jesus. You can't stand it. No, you can't stand it. It's an ability from heaven. It's an ability from heaven. An ability from heaven. You will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh yes, we activate it from the throne room. We activate it right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let there be an activation. I prophesy it. I stand upon this apostolic anointing. We activate it, O oh God. We activate it by the power of the Holy Ghost. God's ability is working in me. Is working in me. God's it's working in me. It's working in me. Sing it from your heart. It's God's ability. God's ability. Say in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout it in the name of Jesus. I declare that the power of the Holy Ghost is at work in my spirit. And tonight, I activate it. Lift your voice. 
rise and pray. Shaba bakata. Leke teteta. Working in me. Working in me. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. The same power that raised the Christ from the dead. Working in me. In business. It is working in me. In ministry. It is working in me. In leadership. It is working in me. In family. It is working in me. Jesus, I come against every challenge, every mountain standing on my path to the next level. I challenge you by the anointing. I challenge you by God's ability and I command you to give way. Lift your voice and pray. Challenge them. Speak. Make sure you are praying. You have an anointing. It shall come to pass in that day that the yoke shall be taken from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Who's appealing to you? Who's appealing to you? Working in us. Working in us. His heart's appealing to you. His heart's appealing to you. His heart's appealing to you. He's working in us. His heart's appealing to you. His heart's appealing to you. might it is not by power there is an ability his God's ability listen hallelujah now listen the issues in our lives when the anointing of the spirit finds expression it can manifest as creativity it can manifest as wisdom Listen, it can manifest as counsel. It can manifest as understanding. i like you to pray and cry to God and say, Lord, every dimension that your anointing needs to convert into to solve the current dilemma in my life, if it is wisdom, may your power become unto me wisdom. If it is the power to challenge gates, let it become unto me. Lift your voice and pray. Miracle 
miracles are happening. Miracles are happening in your life. Not just physical healings. A change. Doors are opening in the spirit. I see doors opening. I see doors opening. I see doors. Doors of power. Doors of influence. The Lord is giving men and women speed. I hear speed in my spirit. I hear speed. You will run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Run like Elijah. By the power of the Holy Ghost. God's ability, God's ability is working in me. Hallelujah. 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 There are levels of favor. Only the anointing can bring. There are levels of increase. Only the anointing can bring. There are levels of grace and glory. Only the anointing can bring. I like you to pray that every door of favor you need to enter, may the anointing bring you into it. Lift your voice and pray. The distance between you. And a major breakthrough is one door of favor away. No man can stop you. I tell you, when the anointing is upon you, you are invincible. No power can stop you. You will climb mountains when the anointing is upon you. When men think you are born with, you will rise by an agency that they cannot understand. It's his ability. It's his ability. Hallelujah. Just one last prayer point. I want you to insist. Listen. I want you to insist and say between now and the end of this month, you must have a testimony. Insist. Lift your voice and pray. Don't pray. Pray of cowardice. You are praying the will of God. Shabakata. By the anointing, let it bring proofs, supernatural testimonies in my life, in my finances, in my body, pray, in my academics, in my marriage. By the Holy Ghost, it will work. If it is by the Holy Ghost, the ideas will come. If it is by the Holy Ghost, it will work.
Hallelujah. Koinonia, listen to me. From today, I want you to walk in the consciousness that I'm anointed. It has nothing to do with a man of God. You need the anointing to birth ideas, financial ideas. You need that anointing for creativity. Your mind will not think independent of the anointing. You need that idea. You need that creativity. The anointing will bring direction to your life. It's God's ability. It's not your ability. It's God's ability. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of your son, Jesus. From today, let no one here be ordinary. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm praying over you from the depth of my heart. And I prophesy to you that the mountains that have stood before you and the next dimension in your work with God, may the anointing of God turn them into testimonies. The believer is a possessor. The believer is a possessor. Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. In the name that is above all names, everything that has stopped the grace upon your life from finding expression, Everything that has stopped the grace of God upon your life from being recognized by those who it was sent to, I tear off that fail tonight in the name of Jesus. Everything that has blocked the flow of grace from the realm of the spirit to you, it leaves heaven but it doesn't get to you. Every pathway in the spirit, by whatever mystery that has been blocked, I open it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spiritual inaccuracy in the name of Jesus, every missing the mark spiritually, every disalignment, everything that makes him get it but not complete, you receive things from heaven, but you don't get the full details. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I supply power to your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, some of you have dreams, but you have an incomplete dream. Just when the information you need in the dream is about to come, then you wake up. You know it was of God. It was holding the key to clarity, but something covered it. Right now, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, may there be spiritual accuracy. I speak in spiritual accuracy. I prophesy spiritual accuracy. Everything that has made you timid and fearful and made you think you are nobody and that the anointing cannot find expression in your life. Tonight I curse that spirit. By the God of heaven I curse fear. I curse intimidation. I curse timidity. By the blood of Jesus Christ. the place of encounter I want you to know that this is a place where God increases your conviction this is the place of surrender do to me what you want this is the place where your life will change do to me what you want listen when the lord turn against the captivity of your family 
When the Lord turned again the captivity of your destiny, he says we were like them that dream. How beautiful is it to see the other side of pain? How beautiful is it to see the other side of a man's trusting God? How beautiful it is to see a man trusting God for grace. Lord, I know you still anoint men, but where is the anointing? When you see the other side of that man, how beautiful it is to see a wilderness turn into a fruitful vine and turn into a forest. I believe in miracles. I believe in the hand of God. I believe the supernatural can invade the world of men and correct and adjust things. I believe in 24 hours God can change a man's life. Listen, I believe in the law of process, but I believe in speed too. I believe God still leads men. I believe God still uses men to make statements in a territory. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And God says, come, let me use you. Let me show men that I am still God, the lifter of men. I believe it. I believe that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer. I believe when men lose things, they can get it back. Yes, sir, including time. Including time, I believe that when men lose things, they can get it back. I believe God can anoint ordinary men. Men who are just available, but the level of grace is not there. But I know there is a place a man can come to where you encounter the power of God. Everywhere is not the same. No, God is everywhere, but he does not manifest his power everywhere. I believe in the power of God. I was sent not only to reveal his face, but to reveal his power. To let men know that he's still alive. To correct misunderstandings about God. Please listen to me. I want to charge your faith before we pray. I believe that challenges can end. I believe that problems can end. Did you hear what I said? I believe a man can sit down and search left and right and only see the goodness of God. I believe it. I believe it. I believe prosperity is real. I don't believe prosperity destroys a Christian. I believe in the blessing of the Lord. I believe in what it can do to your family. I believe in what it can do to your children. I believe in what it can do to your health. I know poverty causes sickness. I know it causes worry. Nobody will preach you into embracing nonsense. No. I believe a man can prosper even as his soul prospers. I believe in speed. I believe God can compress what should happen in five years in one month. I truly believe it. I truly believe it. I believe God can restore time. When a woman has been barren for seven years, if she gives birth to one baby, we thank God, but it's not a statement enough. When she gives birth to triplets, God took nine years of space in three, three years and compressed it in one year. Now, that's victory over time. The hardiness of the hearts of men will require some dimensions of resolve to break their pride to honor God. Please listen, let me tell you. We are not going to use stories and noise to get people to Jesus. Wealth is a weapon. The anointing is a weapon. Favor is a weapon. Mercy is a weapon. Wisdom is a weapon. What are you fighting with? Desire, you will not win. It takes you being equipped with the spiritual arsenals 
that have been made for the victory of the saints in life. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. I believe a man can weary the devil to a point where he will let you go. I believe you can live in a territory and create your own climate financially, spiritually. I believe it. Listen, out of everything I'm saying, throw away the ones you don't believe and open your heart to the ones you believe. I believe a believer can serve God better in an atmosphere of comfort. When your children's school fees are paid, you will serve God better. Don't let religion come with the pride of men and pretend that it does not matter. Yes, I know that none of these things should affect our love for God. But let me tell you the truth. There is a level of pain you continue to have that can harden your heart towards God. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. And that's the time the devil does not want to give you. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around chasing money. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around lobbying a way to, li to be lifted. Vain is the help of man. People of God, please hear me. God did not gather us tonight to waste our time. He gathered us tonight to make real the things in our lives that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I tell you this? Whether you believe in what I said or not, it does not change the truth. The truth was buried. It took only three days. It came out. So whether you believe in the truthfulness of what is said or not, you embrace poverty and see what it does to your life and your family. Embrace mediocrity and see what it does. Embrace sickness and see how much you will spend per week. Your entire resources, when you are finally broke, then the person will die. Is that sickness? Why will it ten, take 10 years to build one house? Is that a testimony? A prostitute will sleep with a man overnight and wake up by the next day with estates and houses and everything. Let's be careful the things we say about God because many of them are not true. Please hear me, especially for our precious visitors. Don't magnify your challenges and come hoping God will change your life. We are talking God here. Not a doctor. Not a consultant. Not an architect. Not a monarch. The God of the universe. You may not be sick in your body, but who told you he cannot change your life? Do you not know he's called the father of spirits? That God can speak to a man while you are here and compel him to bless you. That God can give you a dimension of grace that you didn't enter this building with you. And you turn back. And on Sunday you climb your pulpit as usual. And suddenly fire a new dimension of grace. Do you believe in what I'm sharing? If you being evil know how to give good gifts. Let me tell you, you can hold on to the hands of God and say it was never about your hands. It was about your heart. But tonight, I need your hands too. In addition to your heart, step in over my life. Step in. Please don't give up on God. Wake up. Don't give up on God. Don't come here hoping. I've waited, waited. The God of heaven can compress time. don't believe all this there's no point being here tonight because we are going to pray and you must insist that tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody I came to mean business with my destiny listen when we begin to pray I like you to insist 
that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night. No matter what it is. Some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again. Because of your pain, you've stopped writing some things. You just concluded that God, this one, just, just leave this issue. No. When it was time to resurrect Lazarus, he said, roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Prove that you believe in resurrection by rolling away the stone. Two things men did. They rolled away the stone and they lose the man. What if they lose Lazarus and they found out he was not alive or he just fell and collapsed? Your destiny must open up tonight. It's not a blessing for people to doubt. The Bible says to be diligent in these things, to prove your calling and election, to make it sure. There are things that must be in your life to validate your call and your election. If you're a man of God here, trust God for grace, for God's sake. Just go and stand before people and just open a scripture and speak and close it and say, let's pray. No. That's what the scribes did all the time. But Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy. And he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. They thought they would share the grace. He closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand. He said, stretch your hands. These things I write to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Can we pray? Please find a serious neighbor. And I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. The gift is only given to them that ask. God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. Lord, visit me. Lord, visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Pray. Pray. That devil must leave my destiny today. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Pray, pray, don't look around. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Place something upon my life, oh God. Place something upon my destiny, upon my business upon my church Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. And the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. 
Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me, please, if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, oh God. Pray, do to me, oh God. Visit my family. You said you will wipe away every tear. You call 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. Do to me, oh God. You said I will have my child in 2019. Do to me as you have spoken. Hallelujah. Please look up. Please look up. I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place. Because you see, let me tell you, every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of every season. And if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace, for any season, you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually. Please believe for something to come upon your life. Believe for a grace to come on your life. See, this thing about anointing, if it's not there, it's not there, period. Very simple.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. I will stand tonight praying on the grace for speed. Hold on, hold on. Please listen. There is a reason why I continue to say this. Many destinies are too slow to glorify God. Are we together now? When the devil cannot keep you at a standstill, then your progress will be so slow. It, he said, I must walk the walks of him while it is day. That means I need to gain time. He says, for the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed that vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life that will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life. Are we together? Please lift your hands and let me pray. I believe in the grace for speed. I have seen a measure of that grace and I know it is true that God can shift a man. I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works. Let me just tell you the anointing works. You will see people begin to run. It's, it's not anything superstitious. It is just the character and the operation of that anointing. We need it. The Lord put it in my heart. We need it for our businesses, ministries, and so on and so forth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, inside and outside, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I declare right now at the count of three, let this grace for speed that you have provided even for this season, let it rest on people now. I release that grace. Take that grace now. Please bring them out. Take that grace now. Inside, outside, everywhere. I activate the operation of this grace. I shift your life in the name of Jesus to strange dimensions in the spirit. Receive the grace for speed. Receive the grace for kabakatalika parusia. Receive that grace for speed. In the name of Jesus. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And he ran on barefoot. And overtook the chariots of Ahab to Israel. I command speed. 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 Bring them out. Speed. Keleba, help that woman please. My God. Kelaparus kamana katashikata. Embrakato selekete brakato. I'm still praying in the name of Jesus. It says, Ye have encompassed this mountain for too long. Turn ye northward. I prophesy again. Like, like, like fire from heaven. Let that grace for speed mantle a family now. Not just an individual. Let it come upon families. Families receive speed. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. New level, speed. Speed. Bring them out. Speed. You will never be the same. Never be the same. I'm not praying for individuals now. I'm praying for families. Any family stagnated here. I stand by the power of the Holy Ghost and I prophesy speed inside and outside. I release speed right now. Hela 
Now the Lord is that spirit, he says. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's legs. Chains. And the Lord is saying, the Lord is bringing deliverance now. I'm seeing chains. If you are under this category as I'm praying now, the fire of God, I'm seeing fire moving, but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare, is it not written that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by this chains, I declare be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. I want to pray. God, I'm telling you, I'm seeing, this is, I'm still seeing it. Chains. You see, let me tell you this. Look up. Look up. The Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the spirit of the Lord is. One of it is liberty. Do you know what liberty is? It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life. There is such a thing in the dealings of God with men. As giving men liberty. I want to pray. There will be a mighty deliverance right now. Many of you, this is what has plagued your life. If it is true that victory was wrought on the cross, then it's time to establish it now. Please listen to me. Just follow with the instructions. Be childlike in your heart and let God give you a testimony. Are we together now? He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed wheat among the, I mean, among the, 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 the wheat. And he, we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. My God. I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night. But except God is not God, you must be free. Right now, in the name that is above all names, I pray for individuals and families alike. It is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness that have held men bound. But in the name of Jesus, everywhere here overflow, one, two, three, outside. As you shout that name that is above all names, I decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of God in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout jesus i command forces and go go now go now release destiny release destiny Every ordinance that is not the planting of God, let it go now. Let it go now. I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit. Let it go now. I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church and I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear I don't know what family and what person came here crying but the Bible says to comfort they that mourn. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let an anointing come upon your life now that terminates everything that brings tears. That terminates everything that brings tears.
bring them out. Hallelujah. Young lady, please, she, this one, you, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Yahweh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, say, Yes, you. The Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation. I saw something come upon your eyes, and the Lord is saying he's taking you to dimensions of revelation. Let her go now. Now, release her family. Now, in the name of Jesus. Please listen. I, I know that we don't have time, but please, I want you to, every time the Lord shows me this, then I know that he wants me to move around. I begin to see light, a similitude of angels by my left and right. And it's, it's, a, very, it's a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people. When this begins to happen, all I need to do is, you don't have to touch me, just move around your road. Listen to me, except God is not God. As he has anointed, as I pass your row, if there is anything that is not of God, it must let you go. Are we together now? So please, you pray. The moment we do that, then we we'll begin to minister to the sick. These things are signs and wonders. They are supernatural. They are supernatural even by the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Please. I just want you to believe by faith. Just believe by faith. And then, as I pass, the Lord is going to touch you. It will be the end of, it's not something you can do anything about. You are under the influence of the anointing. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus. That everything that is not of God must give way. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be liberty. Now, liberty, now, in the name of Jesus. Shekete kota, karus kabadish kele brandi kata, empra katus kalabros, keto pres kete pareta. Madam, be free. I take it out of your life now. The hand of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the Lord is touching you. I'm seeing God taking something out of someone's stomach here is going now now i release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of jesus be free now i'm seeing fire rising from this row just from i don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this row Right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare.
praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands here. Everything that must leave anyone, I declare it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please, all of you here, just lift your hands. Right now, I stretch my hands. Now, something is coming on people right here. Be free now, 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 now. Now. Keep praying. Lift your voice. Overflow one. Keep praying. Something is about to change in your life now. Please, you don't have to touch me. And I want you to help everybody close to you. As I pass, the anointing of the Spirit is touching everything that needs to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. 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 That anointing is touching you right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. I take it out of you right now. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Right here where I'm standing. Right here where I'm standing. The Lord is taking something out of your life. Be free. I'm standing here and the Lord is saying it is over. He's speaking to someone, it is over. An anointing is coming on you now. It is over. 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 Shalakata. Over. Madam, be free now. The power of God is touching someone here. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Please help them, help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves. Be free now in the name of Jesus. I declare and declare, be free. Be free, be free, be free. Every devil of darkness, be free now. Please open your heart and receive. Stretch my hands here. Anything that is held, be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. a chain, a chain around here. I don't know who that person is, but I lose you now. As I stand here, I lose you now. By the spirit of the living God, I lose you now. I lose you now. Hallelujah. Overflow one. I don't know if I'm able to walk around it's working now. Please believe. It's a few minutes. God is touching you. You came here so that he will visit you. It's impossible to not testify. Now, please look at me overflow too. I'm not going to pass in your midst. I will walk right here. And as I walk, the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. Be free now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, now. Be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach. Sela kaparato siketa. Every reproach. Go now. Go now. I release your destiny. All of you standing here, I'm passing now. The power of God is coming on you. Be free. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk around. I may not go row by row. Please, let your heart be open. Please. Except God is not God. Whatever it is that has held you, as I pass by the Spirit, the power of
favor of God comes on you, some of you will be receiving impartation. It's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is. Father, in the name of Jesus, honor your word right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, be free. I may not be able to move, but please lift your hand. All of you, at the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. From the front to the be free. Now, in the name of Jesus, I release your destiny now. I release your destiny now. Madam, look at me. I set her free now. Release her destiny right now. That woman you are holding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I declare to you, I, I release speed inside. I want to pray that prayer now. I don't know what has slowed you down, overflow three. From the front to the back, may the grace for speed come on you now. May the grace for speed come on you now. Please, whether you're an usher or not, whether you're an usher or not, help anybody under the anointing close to you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what has held your destiny bound, but in the name of Jesus, one more time I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. You came for a miracle service. showing me a family. I will soon walk out but I just want you to know you are part of the family and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. The Lord is showing me a family here. There is a plague of sickness. Everybody from father to the last child. There is nobody who is fine. Right now as I'm speaking, the power of God is coming upon that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow 3. I'm seeing the number 21. This is the healing anointing coming on 21 people. Right now in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. This is not a healing miracle. This is the anointing to heal. Right now from the front to the back, upon gentlemen and upon ladies, receive that grace. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Please, everyone, overflow. One, two, three, main auditorium. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. And declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray.
Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, when, when we do these things, we are not wasting time at all. You need to see what the Lord um, did in some of those overflows. There are people who have real issues and sometimes, Madam, please lift your hands. I'd like you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer, when I was in overflow three, I saw that grace would do an impartation but is in this season there is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of christ especially in zaria there is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer in the name of jesus take that grace now in the name of jesus christ there is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of christ you don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now, in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the Spirit and I declare, receive a baptism of this Spirit. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. I declare capacity in your spirit man. Capacity. I swing open the door for utterance in prayer. Grace to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer. A fresh grace. A baptism of prayer. Hallelujah. You see, let me tell you this. Please listen. One of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer. And when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding, then nothing will change within their territory. An attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life. Nobody prays out of convenience. There is a grace that must come upon a man to pray. Hallelujah. If you are in ministry, I pray again for the grace for prayer. Let me tell you, if you are a man of God and you are not a man of prayer, you are not in ministry. Believe me, you are not in ministry. It's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry. I decree and declare a supply of the Spirit, an ability from heaven upon men and women of God that anyone who has the call of God upon his life, whether you know it or not, the grace to pray, take it now. 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 The grace to travail not give me tea and bread not give me tea and bread to pray destiny altering prayers <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord we'll oh, quickly minister to the sick now um please listen for those of you who are coming for the first time we usually 
take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write. While we are doing that, please, um, I will minister to those overflow one. Okay, the main auditorium and overflow two. Please listen. Main auditorium and overflow two. Um, when I ask you to come, you will come and stand in front here. You will be ministered to right here. Overflow one, you will stand in front of your projector stand. That away from the canopy to allow for space. Now, um, will I call it overflow 2B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow three. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three. Um, they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um, the second equa area. So let that be a single overflow two. And then finally, overflow three. You can walk to the front of your projector stand. All of you who desire to be prayed for. We believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in miracles. And our time is gone. You'll be ministered to very fast. And then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil if you want to do a thorough walk. You're not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours. But we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have. While you are coming out, please, ushers, PR, join them or any other department um, to collect the, the prayer request. Those online, you can connect by faith if you're trusting God for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here. Praise the Lord. I believe in miracles. If you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers, or you'll find a few people who will lift up their hands or lift up baskets, and you'll be allowed to put it there. Now, very quickly, those trusting God to be ministered to um, for any kind of healing, make your way out quickly. Just like I've designated, please, quickly, you come, stand here by faith. Overflow one in front of your projector stand. Overflow three in front of your projector stand. Overflow two. You can join um, those in the main auditorium here. I hope I'm doing the right thing. And then overflow 2B and 2C, let me call it now. 2B extending to second equa and 2C extending to the gate of the third overflow. All of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast. Very, very fast so that we can finish. While you are doing that, please... Please let me advise, especially for those outside, as you are walking out, make sure your phones, your bags, and any of your belonging is safe. And then help those under the anointing. God is delivering people, setting people free, and let's just let him be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept the people ministering to you, ask you questions. Don't worry. Just a touch, and then you be back to your seat. And check yourself whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting, whatever the situation is, whilst they touch and they minister, just expect a miracle. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Within the time we have, we pray that your healing power will flow. Let the sick be healed. Transform our lives. Visit us in a new way. Glorify Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let incurable situations live. And I pray, God, that you give your people testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Nigeria.
Say katabani, miracle worker, you are the miracle worker, come and do a miracle, a miracle today, come and do a miracle, a miracle today, a miracle worker, you are the miracle worker, come and do a miracle, a miracle today. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. 
To you belong all power, Jesus. Whenever I call your name, you will make a way. Your name is the strong tower, Jesus. Your name is the strong tower. Strong tower. Taking away the pain, you make my life so beautiful. My beautiful, you are taking away the shame, taking away the pain, and you make me just like you. My beautiful, you are taking away the shame, taking away the pain. These are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture from it. And from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too? You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your, you see, you cannot, I don't even know what this is. Uh, I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had, is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From um, Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus. Look what is happening. Let her be healed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, don't cry. Cancer, I speak to you. You have a name, you have a voice. Release this lady now. In the 
name of Jesus. My friend, look at me. You came all the way from Thailand. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God. This fractured leg, I fix it back now. You see what is happening to you? What do you feel happening to you? Huh? Look at me. Go, run. Don't mind them, just focus on me. If you're having pain, we're not acting here. Huh? So if you're having any, a miracle has happened to you. When I held your leg, I felt the power of God moving through you. You see, this thing you see is a very demonic thing. It's not about fracture. Do you understand? Number one, come, my friend. You're together too. I want to pray for you. You see, God is looking for people to represent him in every sphere. Huh? Just because you're footballers, doesn't mean that you ignore God. Many footballers don't love Jesus. They love football and they love the money that comes with it. But we're not only here. God has perfected this. Let me pray on the x-ray, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this miracle remain forever. Amen. I want to pray for both of you. I'll, I'll see you after the service and just say hi since you came just to honor you. But listen to me. I'm sure I don't know you. I've never seen you. Can I prophesy on your career? In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, from today, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You are a footballer, but you play by the anointing, my friend. It takes more than just kicking a ball. I release the grace to excel. And for you, I release the grace to excel. Right now, two of you will return back to Thailand, and the Lord will honor you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank you so much for your patience. We're about to pray on the requests. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I truly believe that as we pray on these requests, that every situation that has defied God, it must answer to the name of the Lord. Let her go now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Out now. Please, let's rise. Thank you for your patience. It's a miracle service. If you are yet to submit your request, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Hallelujah. We have gotten all kinds of of humbling testimonies from this revelation. This is, this is a revelation that God gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched. Not everybody can be prophesied to, not everybody may be personally ministered to. But this is a representation of your pain. It's a representation of your expectation. And please, I want you to believe, release your faith. You may not have come out requiring healing. And with all the ministrations, you may not have been directly ministered to. I want you to believe because this is representing you before God. I want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately. Pray passionately. That Lord, this that I'm bringing before you, this will be the last. I truly believe. Make sure we collect for those outside. If you are still being ministered to, no problem. You can just focus while you are receiving. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm seeing fire burn on this thing. I wanted to go down on my knees, but I just saw fire burning. And the Lord said, I should declare 
and speak over it. Um, declare and speak over it. Um, there is one gentleman and one lady. One gentleman, one lady. The power of God is coming on two of them. The moment that happens, then I have the release to speak on this. These are signs and wonders, my precious people. Sometimes God does these things and we have no idea why he does them. A gentleman and a lady. This is the sign that God gave me. Now I'm ready to pray. In the name of Jesus, believe with me. I stand upon this request now and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit every request laid before God here I decree and declare it lives your life forever please believe please believe we are believers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hear me the Bible says these Egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore I declare that everything that defied the name of the Lord represented here I declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide I call on the God of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years wrote a request then we had not started this i'm not sure I, I think koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and i held and i just heard that it was done in the spirit and i said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever. Three of them are alive today. I have seen them. They are strong. They are fine. The Bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace. When you attempt something higher than your level of anointing, except God instructs you, it is pride. We understand our spiritual jurisdictions. There are things that you have. There are things you may not have now in experience. I want to pray for you. There is most of the requests here. It is favor that will produce it. Listen. Listen. Many requests that we are writing, whether it's a whole notebook, you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word, favor. And that would be it. It would still be worth it there are just different versions of expressing your need for favor I want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of Jesus Christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names I decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of these requests in the mighty name of Jesus. There are requests written here. It is mercy that will answer it. The Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. I declare mercy upon this request. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I stand representing the desires, the pain of your people. You have done it again and again, and we will never take you for granted. Lord, let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request, may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit that brought the need for this request, I banish them from your life in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May it please the Lord that testimonies will come out of this. Now please lift your hands. We're closing. Let me speak over your life. It is always my honor to do this because I have seen the creative power of the word of God. I've seen its ability to turn, to change, to transform lives. There was a very humbling testimony. Something, a gentleman, this is something that happened like last week. I thought he would come and share, maybe he would come down to Zaria and testify himself. That's why I didn't say it. He works in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse. Now, I don't know what kind of carelessness happened, whether his friends or whatever. This gentleman just misplaced the key and these are very serious security keys. It's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one. And it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police. They threatened to do a lot of things and I was about to sleep when I got his text. He had been calling and I said, please send the text. And he sent it and I looked at it and he said, I'm about to lose my job, my wife, my children, this and that. And suddenly the anointing of the spirit came upon me on my bed. I laid hands and I sent him a text. I said, find that key. That's all I wrote. God is my witness. I will not stand here at this level and corner stories. This gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept i'm telling you the truth on that god and he saw me in a dream this is what he said i was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this, you are not a Christian. Because the very foundation of Christianity was a strange miracle. That a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will. Please, let's not limit God. I say these things to challenge us. These versions of unbelief we continue to endorse. It's not going to make our lives fruitful. You have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way. Don't they limited God in the wilderness by saying, can God make a way? Hallelujah. What is strange about an angel of the Lord coming to drop a key somewhere? Didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number? He shared here, you remember? Gave him a number. He calls a general in the army. And they say, who gave you my number? And he doesn't know who gave him his number. Bottom line, he gets a job as a result. Look, let me tell you, there is nothing God cannot do. I'm praying for you. The dimension of testimonies. That will, it will shock you, the testifier first. Receive it now. Receive that strange order of testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. A gentleman here, one of the years, checked his name on admission list and clearly saw that he didn't get anything. He frowned his way to his father who said, you are a foolish son, I'm not surprised. And he came, I don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers, 
returns back to the board and checks and there's his name admission list see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you are liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of jesus i connect you to them i connect you to them i connect you to them by the power of the holy spirit There are times you have the gift, but you do not have access to the ears of the kings. You will need those who are already in the palace. Otherwise, Joseph, you will remain in the prison. I pray for you. Whoever has access to the ears of your helper, may God compel them to speak about you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for everyone trusting God for a job. In the name that is above all names, please believe. And by the power that is in the name of Jesus, I declare that between now and August, by the grace and the name of the Lord, return with a miracle job. Hallelujah. I pray for those in ministry. The fire that must come on a man. John Wesley says, set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn. I decree and declare, may that fire come upon your life. Every dying business in this place, hear the word of the Lord. I speak to you, come back to light now. And to live to deliver those appointed to death there are people appointed to death I heard a man of God give a story of a gentleman who missed a flight he missed a flight and the plane crashed and everybody was happy he missed the flight they didn't know he followed a train that crashed are we together you miss a flight and you are saying Lord I give you praise you enter a train and you die these are people appointed to death. In the name of Jesus. Death is a spirit. It has a voice it can hear. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every family under financial captivity. Every family here. And every individual sincerely trusting God to come through for you financially. I pray for you. May the month of June be your month. Please believe me. May the month of June be your month. Let the hand of God, let the grace of God rest upon you. God causing all grace to abound towards you. May you have sufficiency. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every project you have in front of you, whether it is a building project, whether it's a spiritual growth project, whether it's a ministry expansion project, whether it's a business project, it says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work, that same hand will complete it. I pray. In the name of Jesus, whatever project you have, the grace to execute it, let it be given to you now. I don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the word of God. You will open your Bible and look at it like this, like a storybook. You can read a book of 600 pages in one week, but you can hardly finish one page of the Bible is an attack I decree and declare let the spirit of revelation and a passion for the word of God may it rest upon you may it rest upon you 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Two more prayer points and we're done. Hearing is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit. The grace for results is called the power of performance. Receive that grace now. I speak to you, produce results. Produce results. Repeated results. Predictable results. In every area of your life. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, let me pray for you. Everything that is alive grows. When you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years, no teeth, he can't talk, you know that something is wrong with that child. Are we true? Your destiny is like a child. If it is alive, then it should grow. When a tree grows and begins to mature, it begins to branch. Are we together now? And then it starts to invite the birds. It also invites men to come and partake of the fruit. I don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny. But as we cap up this month's miracle service, especially your spiritual life, some of you, you've not backslidden, but sincerely, you've been at the same level. It's not like you've gone down as it were, but you've just rotated around the same experience. I declare rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me encourage you, listen. Make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that God gives you. And be sure to make it a duty to testify. Let it not be a burden. To, you are not, testimonies don't just endorse that a man of God is anointed. Testimonies are proof to men, to creation, to all and sundry that God is love and that he is still mighty. Testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others. It's important to not withhold testimony. Someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith. So be sure that as God touches you, you may not have the luxury of coming down to Zaria for those of you who are far, but we're on various social media platforms. You can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of God. Praise the Lord. Still standing, everyone. Our time is gone. I want to make an altar call. I believe in salvation. Listen. It matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world, it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter Jesus. Let's settle down. Please let me have your attention. Lend me your attention for a minute or two. You are here in the main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, and all the auxiliary overflows, overflow three, and online. And you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to Jesus and receive of his life. Or there are others who are saying, Apostle, I have given my life to Jesus, but I need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious. Wherever you are and whatever category you belong to, our time is gone. Just one minute for this. Aside from overflow three, because of time, I will request overflow one, overflow two, wherever you are making this altar call and those in quickly leave your seat very boldly and i like for you to come and stand right here let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to jesus i don't expect you to still be thinking about it the holy spirit should already be convicting you do not wait for anyone to come be the first let me for time's sake count one to five one quickly please if you're coming hurry up win that war do not say we came in group and I do not want anybody to know that I'm handing over my life to Jesus. Receiving the life of God is not a funeral service. 
is something that is worth celebrating. Koinonia, are you appreciating them? Keep coming. Come to Jesus. Young and old, come to him. The Bible says, all who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I don't believe this is all. Overflow one, overflow two. Join them very quickly. And the Lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Make sure that Overflow 3 has uh, the people out. God bless you. I salute your courage. Please lift your right hand as I lead you to make this prayer. You are not just reciting a poem. This is a real um, conversation between you and the Lord. You are receiving his life and you are handing over yours. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart, Lord Jesus. Some of you come for altar call when we are saying in Jesus' name. You are not born again. You should come. The, the, the prayer, you don't stroll around and then round up. You don't round up the prayer of salvation. You participate with your heart. Man believes. Are we together? Okay. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me I believe that you resurrected for me tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life I have the life of God and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God. I move forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones. Precious as they are, we receive them into the fold, the family of faith. And I declare their sins forgiven. And I declare by the authority of scripture that beginning from today, the grace to walk victoriously is released upon them. Holy Spirit, I commend them to you that you continue your ministry in their lives. Make mighty men and women out of them. I bless you with the grace that grants you capacity to stay consistent. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I salute all of you for making this decision. And then for those who also made online, thank you for making this decision. Very quickly, I'd like you to follow. There's someone waving her hand. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Katekato Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.